one more flush, but uh, I think even if we retest 61.8, if you want to be long the dollar against anything, I think it would be, uh, it could be risk on, uh, but the risk on is uh, definitely in the S&P. So if the S&Ps have the juice to travel up towards 4,300, here's your big number that I talked about in NASDAQ, 13.8. Okay, it's almost like they're two different markets, aren't? Doesn't it look like that? Kind of like how the euro looks compared to the pound today. And it's amazing to me that uh, cable got this kind of pop just on. Uh, I believe I read that you know they've taken the COVID uh, down from a four to a three. So um, I think that's the reason behind the strength in cable. He actually had this kind of ghost trade up here on Sunday night's opening, and then it traded here. So uh, we're also at 78.6 here on cable. So should probably make a new high. This is a confirmed high. <clears throat> okay, the local elections may be part of it. Okay, I think it's mainly COVID news. Maybe it's, oh, it is election results. But it, okay. that's, that's, that's odd because I thought the kind of nationalists won in the Scottish election. And uh, they're, oh, yeah. they've said they're going to have another, or they're probably aiming for another referendum. So I wouldn't think that's positive for the pound, but anyway, okay. I, don't, I don't know. Well, what's okay, saying. yeah, the vote. So, um, and yeah, that vote in Scotland, I forgot about. Okay, so. And the nationalists winning, um, that, you know, that's not as, if they won, why did they decide to stay? Well, you know, if they're going to leave, they're going to have a referendum, but that's... You know, I see. Okay. That, yeah, that's the party that said, basically, they're, they're most vocal about having a, a referendum. I think that's what the market may have been fearing, but now yeah. that it happened, uh, Sterling's rallying. So if anybody can help me, that'll be nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy. So yeah, I mean, big move in Euro pound. I actually um, thought that we were gonna, you know, maybe clean out stops here, but it's looking pretty negative again, isn't it? So um, maybe we're gonna get a new low here in uh, Euro pound, and this was it for the rally. We'll see. Um, Pretty wild markets and uh, oil, you know, you had the news about the pipeline and the thing is, is it gonna, how long is it gonna last? How serious could it become? When I look at crude, it wouldn't surprise me for another high, right? Uh, you have a one, you have a two, it looks incomplete to me. We should get another rally, okay? So, uh, those are some of the things I see, and I, you know, I still believe that if yields are headed higher, this is a big deal. Okay, so we'll see what happens. We could pause and fill out this candle for a few days, which, you know, will kind of make people forget about this. Okay, if it goes back there. Okay, DJ. Feb twenty twenty. What was that? Eighty two. 84, 83, so right in the middle there. Okay, so uh, if anything, Friday should uh, uh, teach you a lesson not to hold positions into red numbers. And we've had a couple of examples of, uh, you know, just bloodbaths based upon it. Uh, a week or so ago was uh, BOC, Bank of Canada and uh, this employment report, you know, uh, unless you, you know, guessed right, um, not many people thought we were gonna have a number like that. But I guess if you were bearish a dollar and you had a lead, uh, you know, you feel like a genius, but it could have gone the other way too. So avoid these red events. If there's, you know, uh, anything to be learned from that is you never know. It's really not trading, it's roulette. So um, that's a very important lesson to learn. Be flat into this stuff, okay? Um, that's about all I have for now. Should be an interesting week, but keep an eye on yields and let's see what kind of uh, reaction we have in some of the other markets that 
won't like higher yields. Okay, so Blake, how are you? I hope you had a good weekend. Hope you have a great week coming up. Hey, good morning, Coach. How are you? Yeah, good. I saw your uh, five-minute. Uh, Jim sent me your little snippet on uh, the interview you did with him Friday, and uh, seems like Jim is thinking the same way. You guys can find uh, a, a nice interview by Jim on Trader Summit. Uh, I'll put the link on on the chat box. Yeah, and uh, he thinks it's a kind of a head fake, and that there may have been technical reasons for. Uh, the big miss. He he does, and you know, uh, um, it was nice to interview him. He's a you know he's one of those guys that um, I, I I believe more people should really know about. He he really he he's got the full picture here, and um, I think he's a you know I think he's a, just a wealth of knowledge. So it's it's been great that how long have you known him? Gosh, nineties. Really, or wow. early '90s? Yeah, he's or he's, yeah, he's right a smart there. guy. Um, I, and I, you, I like him. He's like he's like, uh, and not because of his age, but because of his demeanor. He's like your he's like your nice grandpa, like you know, like the nicest guy you have ever met. You know that. Yeah, I knew him, but when we both didn't look like grandpas. <laughs> and in fact, uh, we were both used to be on the before CNBC. There was a thing called the Financial News Network when. They were in Santa Monica before they went to New York and became, uh, you know, NBC bought them out. And oh. uh, that's how we got to know each other. I was spending summers out in Carlsbad and he was in California. We met at a bar, at the Sandbar, and we've been buddies ever since. So At the Sandbar? A, you met him at the yeah. Sandbar? Yeah, we met for a beer there. Yeah, well, the Sandbar so in Carlsbad. Yeah. yeah, I love the Sandbar. Gosh, it's not there good. anymore. They... Well, they then they move it down south a little bit, right? I, 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 they didn't move it. I, I think they just uh, uh, sold out. Uh, it's changed hands so many times, uh, you know. Uh, well, you know, you day. know what I was thinking. Of, it was the sandbar that's down there in um, oh, in P uh, Pacific in Beach. Pacific Beach, yeah. It's like oh. that's like one of the only like last bars that are actually on the sand. You just, oh yeah, just they don't happen that often anymore. Yeah, I know. Anyway. That's neither Cal there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I miss California. So, uh, how do you handle Friday's uh, surprise, buddy? Uh, good. I, you know, I did a the the trader battle, and 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 I did it with um, uh, against uh, Chris Pulliver, which some of you might have remembered him. Uh, you know what? If you go to Trader Summit and you go to the last event that we did, so here's the event archive. You, you, some of you might remember him. Um, I remember him. Yeah, this, this this gentleman right here uh, from Market Market Traders Institute, and it was him and I matched up against uh, you know um, that we did the trader battle, and and I'll and I'll tell you uh, it was it was it was a non farm payroll, but it was really easy to read. So hopefully you guys did well. And the reason why I say it's easy to read because it was like okay, that number is weak. I told you guys the day before what I was going to do. And I told everybody, like, I'm like, if it's a weak number, we're buying, you know, risk and we're going to, you know, sell dollars. I mean, it's, it's very simple. It was a very simple plan. That data was out. It was so weak. I mean, that was like, that was below the lowest expectations of any bank. And I forget who the, the low, the low end was, was like at 800,000 jobs. <laughs> What do we create like 260,000 jobs? I mean, something ridiculous. Um, and so that number was so weak that the dollar, you know, obviously weakened as risk appetite rose. I mean, so it was a real easy, you know, trade. And so the, the position I took was long Aussies. Um, and I figured we were going here to uh, 78.50, which we did by Friday. Um, by the end of the day, we actually hit, you know, my target. Um, but yeah, I figured the Aussie was going to squeeze right past here because everybody's short. So, and and I, I really wonder how far the Aussie is going to go now. I mean, stocks are going to have to turn in order for the Aussie to turn. But it, I thought it was a very easy read for for and and by the way, if you guys want to see exactly how I reacted during the trader battle, um, shoot, I have the video somewhere. Um, 
I don't know if Stelius and Steve posted it here. No, I don't think they posted it here. Um, I'll have to. No, I don't have the video actually. You you know um, where it is? I'll tell you where it is. Hold on. Uh, it was. Let me see. Um, six things to. Uh, oh, you know what? We I I did a a, a YouTube video on a. Um, over the weekend on the six things that you should know before trading an economic event. And uh, let me see if I can find that for you guys, because it, it's the link is in here. So I'm going to, and it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's one you should probably watch anyway, um, just for your, Oh, here it is. This is a, a let, me, let me, let me just put the link. I'm going to put the link in the uh, description of what we're doing here. So this way you guys have it. So just bear with me guys. I'm just um, getting it for you. Here's the chat box. Here it is. But it, it's in the, in the description of this link. Okay, so here's the video. So if this video right here, um, it's, well, I'll, 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 I'll just put it in the link so you guys can figure it out. Anyway, that, that will give you um, a, a an overview of how I what what I was doing really through through the um, jobs or through the jobs report, and like I said, it was a pretty easy read, um, and I mean I had it pre planned out for the last couple of days. I mean it couldn't have it, it, it the the what would have made it really difficult, Dale, is if the number oh. was in line. That would have been way more challenging, right? But when you have an you have a, a number way outside. Thank you very much, Amir. Amir, we just posted it in the chat room. Um, if uh, if we had a, a number that was you know more in line with expectations, it would have been a more difficult read. But because it was so you know below expectations, it was you know pretty easy yeah. to figure out. It's a shocker. It was a shocker, and you know the thing the thing I pointed out during the week ahead video, and the thing that I you know have to think about right now is look at the fed chairman Powell and look at how dovish he's been and you have to admit that he's been dovish probably for a reason um and you know he they they're obviously his big concern has been employment and that's and and until we can see jobs really come back and we can make up some of that lost ground he's going to continue to be dovish so that's why you're seeing, you know, stocks continue to rally to all time highs. Um, the dollar continues to get hit. And I don't foresee this stopping. Like, I, I don't know what's going to really stop this move now. And and then then you have like, you, you look at these cryptocurrencies. I mean, look at Ethereum. It's at 4,000 bucks this morning. Definitely a value play right here. I'm joking. That was a joke. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> I know some of you are like, what? But look at this thing, how it, it exploded when we went outside of that channel, you know, back at, this was two weeks ago when we were probing this like 2,800 level. It was two weeks ago because I remember mentioning it on a Sunday night during the week ahead video saying, hey guys, you know, watch the Ethereum market. It's popping out of this channel. I had no idea we were going to make it this far. I thought we were going to just reach up towards 3000 and reverse. I mean, it's gained. I mean, this thing's gained another since then it's gained another 50% in value, basically 40 some odd percent in value since two weeks ago. It's amazing. So you gotta, you know, when you have rallies like this, and by the way, my 14 year old son and all of his friends are talking about cryptocurrency. Just so you guys know, what's that? Of course they are. <clears throat> yeah, I mean they're, they're they're you know, and it's it's funny when you have like, it's I don't say it's funny. It's just it's it, it's amazing when this is the conversation that was at my house yesterday is Mother's Day and my um, my sister and her husband and nephew and my kids and we had our our, our neighbors over. That they're our bubble you know, our COVID bubble, if you will, uh, but their kids were over. And then, um, then they're on FaceTime with like other kids. 
And they're like, why would I pay, uh, why would I pay um, $18,000? No, 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 I'm sorry. $20,000 a year in, in state for Arizona State University, because my kids are going to be going to college here soon. You know, why would I pay, you know, $20,000 a year when I can just, you know, trade and make money? And I was like, oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. It depends. If, if he intends to study economics, it's much, much better if he saves the money indeed. Yeah, I may, maybe, I guess, uh, you know, but the thing is, is, I mean, we, we're talking about um, in-state colleges, meaning an Arizona State University is, you know, I, 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 I went there for a year and a half and it's nothing, you know, exciting. And, I, and I'll tell you for $80,000 to get your degree in-state. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> It's Compared crazy. It's Arizona I, State University. This is not Harvard. That happens, guy to guys to to any market that the government interferes. When did uh, education student loans? Yeah, exactly. When one. did education become much much more expensive, and the trend of, of price increases started becoming exponential? When yeah. the government started guaranteeing the loans, because then universities were like, oh. You know, there is <laughs> there is a financial bucket there. I mean, you know, we, we can charge more more than yeah. we need. We can just, you know, start competing on like, um, uh, you know, how, be, how how nice our basketball uh, um, ground is and, you know, what facilities we have. So but let's they've had some... this program, Steve, for a long time. I had student, federal student loans. Uh, and you know how long ago that must have been for college. Right. Oh yeah, it started actually uh, slowly. The 70s. Because it, exactly, yeah. it started yeah. with the Vietnam War. Yes. Okay. So, hey, hey, really quick, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I you know, I, I know I got us off topic, um, but I, what I wanted to point out real, really fast is some of these the what the dollar did on on Friday. Um, you have to take a look around at what it did, at, like against so many currencies. Like here's the cable. I, I just exited. Uh, the pound as we hit 141 from over the weekend. Uh, I was long this on Friday. I actually, after the non-farm payroll, going back into the chat room uh, on Friday, I said, "Hey, I'm I'm going to buy some of this sterling because we're we're breaking out out of this triangle. We were literally tra trading right here at 139.50, um, uh, and look where we're at right now. I mean, I know there's um, you know some news about." You know, there's some political news in the in that's that's surrounding the sterling. The fact of the matter is, is we broke out of this triangle that was consolidating for the last uh, week and a half, and we we talked a lot about this last week about this consolidation. So it shouldn't be any surprise that when we 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 extend out of there, that it's it, it's pretty explosive. Now I'm going to point something out really quick with the sterling as we we get towards the 141.40, because uh, some people in our chat room are like, well, where do we short it? I think you got to be real careful with longs up here. And if you take this high point um, and then you, you know, you, you find this double bottom right here, which by the way, the double bottom, you know, does point further, just so you guys know, you know, the double bottom will take us down to, uh, you know, 141.70 roughly. But uh, I want to point this out. You know, we are also at the 78% retracement here. And so this whole area, in my opinion, between where we're at currently, you know, to the 141.80, roughly somewhere around here. So again, anywhere in, within this price 60 pip, 60 pip range, you guys got to be really careful with longs because look at how overbought the four hour relative strength is and knowing what, what I just told you, double bottom completion, okay, uh, overextended relative strength intraday, 78% retracement, 161% extension. There's an 88% retracement just a little further up. Those are basically the two last FIB levels that you're, you, 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 you've got really to deal with. Just, I think this is a whole area of resistance that we're, we're, we're coming into. And so if you are along the sterling, just be aware of that. You know, I, I'm, I'm just, this is, this is the price that, that I'm going to be like real. I, I mean, I'm I already got out. I got out at 141 this morning. Um, but 
if you guys are looking for counter trend moves or if you guys are just wanting to you know take some profits up here i think you should be keenly aware of where we're at right now especially it, it's monday we might get a little selling today a little bit of profit taking today but you know if we get like a turnaround tuesday where risk goes back up again then you might see one of these like you know pull back a little bit and then then you know you can get long for continuation moves you know going into later into the week anyway sorry steve stellius i just wanted to mention that because you know we've had such an extended move over the weekend um it, it, you know you got to be cognizant you know me on the other hand i just refuse to fade uh, dollar and equities. I mean, no, no, no. I, I wouldn't I would be buying be it. Of it I be... wouldn't be buying it. Of course. I mean, it's already extended for the day. I mean, yeah. yeah you you, you want to you want to try to buy a pullback or maybe sell rallies in the yeah. The but you know, I, I, I it's been so long since the last time I actually found that you know remotely a reason that I would want to be even short term. You know, long the dollar or short equities, and unfortunately, nothing has changed. So you know the two-way volatility <laughs> type of trading remains dead and buried. You know, and, and here's, the, here's the thing. So, you know, I had that interview with Jim over the week or on Friday, uh, which hopefully you guys can go watch that video uh, on, on Trader Summit. It's right here, guys. It's, uh, it's right here. This video right here, um, inter you know, this, this interview. Watch it. And he, he, he's like, well, I think this is an anomaly. You know, this is uh, uh, the, the, you know, the Fed chairman's not going to, the Fed chairman's not going to change his tune based on the data. The problem with that thought process is near term is we don't have jobs data for another month. You know what I'm saying? So the, I, the dollar weakness that we're seeing right now, I, I'm not sure I'd want to be on the other side of it more than intraday. Um, while in, unless, you know, next jobs data ends up being, you know, a, a really big bounce back, then I'll feel a little bit better about being long dollars. Anyway, just some mm, you know, there. you know, I agree with him, but on, not only for jobs data. If you remember, I've keep, kept saying that the, the Fed will not even react. Wait, wait, to wait, 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 Steve, are you are you are you eating food on a webinar? Yeah, why not? Are you a talking with of, your mouth full? A little bit of Did bread. Did your mom never tell, teach you anything? Ah, come on, this is family. You know, just. Us and a few hundred people. Typical Greek. All right. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. So, so you know, I agree with uh, with Jim, and I've said the same about inflation data. I don't think the Fed will uh, will react even to inflation data simply because if they acknowledge there is an, there is an issue, then they have to acknowledge they need to do something about it. But are they actually willing to derail the quote unquote economic recovery? No, they're not. So they, they will keep. Uh, Acknowledging only the only the data that are um, uh, th that are giving them a reason to remain uh, dovish, and completely ignore the data that um, would force them to uh, to be hawkish. And I think it's this is going to go on for you know quite a period of time. I don't I don't think we're nowhere near some kind of a um, central bank uh, you know turn of yeah. you know policy. So. Um, sorry guys, I, I was just looking, this is probably a good setup for you all. Uh, something that I'd be thinking of was like, like if you can get a 140.30 entry, sorry, this is, I just wanted to go just revisit the Sterling really quick and, um, looking for a move back up to like the 142, maybe even further, you know, uh, we, we might actually extend this all the way out to like 143.50. So, you know, do something like this where, you, you know, your risk is very limited. You might be risking close to 50 pips. Um, you know, like let's say you, you know, trade a hundred thousand in currency, you're, you're, you're risking, a, that's $327 or in, in sterling. So you're talking about a $500 risk, you know, to make probably closer to three grand. I mean, that's, that's, that's not a bad risk reward for, you know, a, a dip back to the breakout point. Anyway, that's just some, I wanted Indeed. to give you guys that food for thought all right um, the question is are we are we gonna see a pullback <laughs> are, are we gonna get back down there i know yeah you know, that's a question that that's always the question is do you think yeah. we're, and again this has probably more to do with equities and and you, you, let's all let's also not forget and and i and i know dale you've got to take over here in just one second um if you look at like gold and silver 
you know, gold is the, 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 the double bottom completion uh, actually happened on Friday, but notice how we're stalling up here. So let's imagine for a second, gold, you know, is complete, that double bottom is complete and we pull back a little bit in gold. This, this will allow for a move. Uh, this will allow for this move to happen, in my opinion. You know, you'll, you'll see a bounce back in the dollar if gold and silver actually pull back a little bit. I'm not saying they're going to, I'm just saying if they do, because they, they have stalled, they, they've stalled since, uh, since Friday. Anyway, um, hey, hey guys and gals, I need to mention before I go, if you haven't visited our webinar sponsor, please do so. Pepperstone Securities, they are um, our webinar sponsor. They, they make sure that we could do these free webinars for you guys. If you live outside the US or Canada, please open your account here because if you do, you could get up to four months free of Forex Analytics. If you live in the US and Canada, um, contact Forest Park FX so they can make sure that you're getting cash back rebates because if you are not getting cash back on your trades, uh, I don't know why you're not. You're just uh, giving that money away, as simple yeah, as that. You are, yeah. So anyway, all right, Dale. Well, you do a lot of that, don't you? What's You're that? a very generous guy, Steve. Oh, Steve does, gifting yeah. my money away, not to brokers. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think they really need it. I mean, they make quite a lot. I, I think they can they, they can survive with uh, some less. Poor brokers, go turn yeah. your account. Yeah. All right. So, um, thank you, Blake. Thank we you have guys. Stephen Clapham with us. Stephen, welcome back to Face. How are you? Waiting to hear your voice. I have made you a panelist. Hey, Dale. Sorry about that. I was muted. Um, so I've, I'm doing well, and I've come in the right day because you're talking about sterling. Okay, right. Okay. Uh, is sterling behind your balance sheet? Well, my, yeah, my, every... <laughs> I'll tell you what. My balance sheet didn't have much sterling for quite a long while, but I've closed almost all my sterling shorts. And okay. I, I can see what the guys were talking about, you know, overbought intraday. But, yeah. you know, you don't want to base your reference on 120 or 125 because sterling, you know, 150, 160 is kind of like the right relationship against the dollar. And okay. you know, when I was earning in dollars, it was $2 to the pound, which killed me. I remember. But, but I'll tell $2. you what, um, you know, at 140, sterling still looks quite cheap to me. And you there's people remember, talking two dollars, Stephen. Well, uh, <laughs> longer term. I don't think it's going back to two dollars. I'll tell you, if it goes to two dollars, I'm going to move to America. But um, oh, okay, I, 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 <laughs> that's really that would that's really a desperate. If move. it goes to two dollars, probably it's going to be the era that you want want to move to America. Well, I don't know. I I, I, I like America, but uh, uh, yeah, me too. But if it goes to two dollars, there's going to be a very good reason for it, and I don't think things in America are going to be very rosy. Well, you say that, but it was two dollars in pound was two dollars in two thousand and six seven. You know, very not true. that long ago, fifteen years ago, and America was doing pretty well then. So you know, I, good I think counterpoint, Stephen. Mm -hmm. uh, different circumstances and the reason uh, is going to be different for it to go to two dollars. Well, it might than be. It was it, back then. It might be this time, but I think you know the the, the you don't want to be short sterling um, anymore because we've got compared with the rest of Europe, we're doing much better on COVID. So the vaccination program is way ahead of the rest of Europe. We we've, yeah. we've done very badly. So the economy is very badly hit by COVID but we should bounce back out of it much more rapidly. And relative to the rest of Europe, we're, we're much more tech oriented. So obviously the quoted markets aren't as tech rich as the United States, but in the, the economy is quite tech rich. You know, there's quite a lot of tech activity goes on in, in the UK, particularly in London. So, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't write off the UK economy. I think we're in, in, in we're set up, we've got a good setup. And although you might not want to buy sterling today, I wouldn't rule out buying sterling medium term. 
What do you think about, uh, do you follow Euro pound, Stephen? I know you're a, a stock picker and we're talking Forex here. Um, Euro pound uh, is, you know, sharply lower today. So has cable become kind of like a safe haven for people in Europe? Do you think the Europeans are dumping euros and buying uh, cable? Well, it's possible. I mean, I, I don't know what's happened today, Dale, so I don't want to particularly comment uh, on Well, that, but... for example, the euro's up a few pips with cable up over 100. So well, the thing is that I think you've got to be very cautious about the euro because the euro okay. is a very artificial construct. And okay. there's all sorts of strains and pressures we've seen across Europe in the economies. Now, look, they're, they're all committed to maintaining the euro, but will Italy, will Greece, will they manage to claw themselves out of this, their current predicament? And I think, you know, at some point, the, you know, Germans retire at 65. And they look at themselves bailing out Greece, where they, they retire at 60. And, you know, if you were a German voter, you'd have to ask yourself, what, what is this all about? You know, I've got no relationship to these Greek people other than the fact that we're sharing, <laughs> we're sharing the currency. And I would, yeah. I would be quite upset about it. And you've got to remember also that the, the, the tone at the top is going to change in Germany, because Angela Merkel is going to retire. Right. And we're going to have a new leader we're going to have right, a, right wing nationalists. I, oh, I, I hope not. I can't imagine. I can't imagine that happening in Germany. I really can. But you know, well, it happened. Uh, you know, a century ago. It happened a century ago, but you know, yeah. it was so awful that hopefully, you know, memories are are still are are still fresh. Yeah. But you know, we're going to have a new leader in Germany. I'm not. I, I'm not an expert on German um, on German politics. But there is various factions bidding, and and you know, these these um, European governments tend to be coalition governments. So it tends to be, you know, in order to get you know the in order to get your coalition in power, you've got to side with a, a more marginal faction, and they therefore can hold an undue power relative to their size and. You know the Greens are going are have been doing very very well. Interestingly, the Greens got seven percent of the vote in the London mayoral election just last weekend, which I mean that really stunned me. So Euro, I would be very careful about because I just think. What did the Greens, uh, Stephen, uh, stand for? What's their political? Um... They're they're. The, platform. The, the Greens are environment the environmental okay, party. Okay, that's so what I thought. They're save okay. the planet. Yeah, and tree huggers. They're the tree huggers, but yeah, you know what? Okay. They will we'll all be tree huggers in a few years because because we're going to miss them, or or what? Well, we're we're missing the trees. I think um, you know, this is a, a movement which is far more pronounced in Europe. Than it is Every in time Europe. I hug a tree, though, I get scratched up by the bark. Yeah, but you you, you know, probably but... drive you probably drive a pickup truck and have no. a house with air conditioning and, uh, and well that yeah. And pollute the planet. Whereas we, we in Europe, we trying, we're trying to save the planet, and there is a, a a massive swing going on. This is part. This is partly demographics as well. Remember, because yeah. you know you've got more younger people voting, and the more younger people you have, the more environmentally conscious they are, and the more likely they are to vote green. So, the the bottom line, Dale, we you, you didn't call, you didn't invite me on to talk about politics but um i think the bottom line okay. is that buy sterling medium term but be careful of the euro because the euro is one of these things that can come back to bite you because something unexpected can happen and it's just not a, it, it's not a, a normal currency so i think you've just got to be slightly careful about it what about the okay uh, you know i mean you've uh, turned turned this into a currency discussion uh, what do you think about some of the commodity uh, currencies like the Australian dollar? I'm not, I'm not, an not familiar. You know, okay. I... Let's get back to your wheelhouse and behind the balance sheet and the book you were, uh, you wrote and, you know, we've had ongoing continuing uh, bull markets across the world uh, just in different degrees. Uh, 
Uh, I'm not sure I haven't looked at uh, the London market, the FTSE in a while. I know it was underperforming U.S. So what are you seeing out there? And and um, what do you think are some good picks? Could uh, some green stocks be the way to go since people are, you know, where there's going to be a lot of money spent here in the U.S. if President Biden gets his uh, multi-trillion dollar package passed? Uh, what's on your radar? Today, well, sure. So. I mean, I think, you know, obviously the, the strength of sterling is weighing slightly on the London market because a lot of our big stocks tend to be overseas earners and all mm -hmm. the biggest stocks are, are have got very little of their business in the UK. So they get hit by the translations as the pound gets stronger. Right. They find it harder to grow their earnings and their cash flows. Right. But I think there's a huge, a huge amount of of small value companies in the UK, which are sterling denominated, which are dealing domestically, which are doing extremely well. And, you, you know, uh, this is not a recommendation to buy it today, but stocks right. like Next. So Next is a, a UK retailer, but it's got like- NEXT. NEXT. -E yeah. You know, it's one of my favorite words, most important word for investors and traders. Because <laughs> yeah. we all dwell in the past sometimes, you know, we look I, back and say would have, could have, should have. And instead of wasting that energy, uh, you should be saying next, just like a great athlete who makes a blunder on the field. Uh, you know, he doesn't sit there and commiserate it and talk to his teammates about it. He just, uh, it's good to have a short memory and move on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Next is uh, an interesting company because it's not just an apparel retailer. So it sells men's and, and women's clothes, but yeah. it's, it, its background was it used to have a catalog and it sold mm -hmm. a lot of its products on credit through the catalog. And that catalog, the sales have trans translated into online sales. So it now does a lot of online sales, but it makes a huge margin when it sells on credit. And it does that. Do you want to share your screen, Stephen? I mean, I have your uh, logo up there. You want to just talk, or was there anything you wanted I, to visually show people? I, I don't have anything on. Okay. Next All right. So right go ahead. Because I'm I didn't sure. know what we we're going to talk about. But let me, okay. just, let me just tell you um, a bit more about it. That okay. Next um, is interesting because it's got a, a very good online business. And it's now doing a sort of mini Amazon. It's actually offering its logistics capacity to its competitors. So it's not just a retailer, it's also a, a, a tech business in a way. And it's run by um, Lord Wolfson, who is one of the original um, family behind Gus, Great Universal Stores, which is Next is a spin off, spin out from that. And so um, Lord Wilson is one of the original family and he's been, I think, one of the best um, FTSE 100 chief executives that we've seen. Um, he's actually a brilliant strategist. And even if you don't want to invest in his company, I would say to you, your listeners, your viewers, um, really worthwhile going on the next website, next PLC, um, looking at investor relations and reading some of his stuff. I, in my courses, you know, I, Dale, I, I've got an online training school. And yes. when I talk about buybacks, I use the philosophy that um, Lord Wilson wrote down in his chief executive's report, I think back in 2012, because he explained the reasons, the strategy behind buybacks. And he did it better than anybody I have ever seen. So um, next PLC is very interesting, very interesting stock. Maybe not necessarily, you know, one that you need to buy right now, right here, because it's had a good run. But generally speaking, that's a sym symptomatic of the sort of value on offer in the London market. And it, it's really an interesting, really an interesting market, I think, now, because we're early coming out of COVID. We've had a very bad experience so we've got a very low base we're coming from and we've you know like you we've got very loose um fiscal policy very loose monetary policy so yeah 
the you know the economy's growing extremely fast. But the worry I've got here, and I, I think it's probably a worry you probably want to have in America as well, is inflation. Yeah. I don't know what you're seeing there, Dale, but I'll tell you my personal experience is that inflation is already very strong here. So I just went for lunch with my wife to the local sort of healthy Japanese Asian style food place. And um, the price, they, they changed the size of the bowls. Okay. So it's like yeah. a takeout. It's like a takeout, or you can you can eat in, but you 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 get it in a plastic container or a cardboard container. And um, they change the size of the container, and they put the prices up. So you've bo got both shrinkflation, what we call shrinkflation, where they reduce yes. what you're buying, and inflation, where they put the prices up. Yeah, that uh, you're exactly right. Well, a lot of it. Uh, has to do with what's happening in the uh, commodity market. So you have grain prices, meat prices through the roof. Okay, so it's, uh, you know, you've never seen prices like this in grains and meats, at least in my career. Um, there used to be a war chant uh, in at the Board of Trade for beans in the teens, and they're way above the teens. So, you know, you, you could just look at almost anything uh, corn, same thing, wheat, same thing, sugar, same thing. So commodity prices, um, and it's not all because of supply chain issues. Some of it's supply chain issues. Some of it's just supply Yeah. and, and, uh, and a weaker currency. So yeah, we're seeing it here, but we're only seeing just the <clears throat> beginning stages of it. Yeah, haircuts, everything's gone up. So yeah, very different environment than we had a year ago. Very yeah, different. I, I mean, it, it's just um, without a central bank that I think has either the capability or the willingness to um, this is their goal. So they're going to accomplish their goal uh, uh, for higher inflation and in spades, probably be more successful. I think they're already successful and they don't think they are Yeah, because of I, their I, measured moves. I think it's a real worry, though, because, you know, once once inflation starts, it's quite difficult to get it out of the system. And, you know, they don't want to put up interest rates. And that's traditionally been their principal lever right. to pull against inflation. So if they don't put up interest rates to cool the economy down, then inflation is going to get hold. And yeah, I mean, that's good news. And that could really only slow down maybe economically sensitive commodities, but um, you can't print grain to bring down the price of grains and higher interest rates aren't going to affect yields on crops. No. Um, so, you know, there is some, uh, you know, really uh, real inflation, not just monetary inflation based upon supply demand and uh, the supply of grains uh, and stockpiling by China for years, they've been stockpiling wheat. So they knew this stuff was coming. And, you know, uh, I don't know how you resolve uh, a, a Super Bowl market in food and how you get it to come down without, uh, you know, really increasing production, which can take quite some time. And, you know, that's more of like getting back to what you're saying, a climate issue. Yeah. And I'm growing food. Absolutely. And, and, you know, it's not just, I mean, it's not just food. I mean, you know, copper. Um, somebody yeah. was asking about copper and, uh, you know, the the supply response is going to take quite a long time, right? Yeah, and, to, uh, to find new mines or reopen mines. Uh, yeah, another very long process. So uh, my friend and associate, Steve uh, Volge, uh, likes anything that has intrinsic value will go up in this environment. Yeah, anything I think that's real. right. And, and you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not as big a fan of the energy complex. And in particular that, you know, there's a lot of people like the big oil majors, um, which are very significant components of the FTSE 100. And I've been very negative on them for, oh, two, three years more now. And I'm still quite cautious about the, the, the big oil companies because, 
we're seeing so much money being diverted into ESG related funds that the you know the, the those funds are never going to own an oil major. So almost irrespective of what you believe about the energy market, it's just going to be very very hard for those companies to attract new shareholders. And they've got a huge problem as they try and shift away from their traditional hunting ground of oil and, and gas. And they're now starting to get into things like wind and solar. And they're paying just ridiculous prices. And they've got, you know, a huge balance sheet to shift. You know, so yes. they're, 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 they're going to push the price up of these renewable assets and they're going to find it very, very difficult to generate a decent economic return. So you've got structural challenges within their business and you've got the, the less attractive to the growing pool of shareholder money. So they are kind of like the, the, the thing to, to really avoid. But other commodities, I think, are, you know, it's hard to see what you shouldn't like, especially in, in, in this sort of environment where you're getting accelerating economic growth, admittedly coming from a very low base. But also, you know, re- many areas, uh, restriction on supply. So how about, how about PMs as a hedge? Precious metals. What do you well, think? Like- are, there, are there miners that you're, you know, you've looked at balance sheets and you like, and is it possible that a lot of the majors will start to look to buy, buy up smaller gold companies and buy their production? Could we have some M&A going on in the mining sector? Well, I think there will be, and especially as, as prices rise. I mean, I've been slightly bemused that gold hasn't gone up more. Um, You know, when you, when you look at um, the cryptocurrencies, and you look how strong they've been, you would have expected there just to be some spillover into gold. But of course- I've um, heard it's competition to gold. Well, it is competition to gold, but you think that, you know, one would drag the other up. You know, you, normally, yeah. that's what, normally that's what happens. I mean, the people that are buying crypto aren't the people, aren't the traditional gold buyers, but you think it would make They're older younger. people like me buy yeah. more gold, right? Because, you know, you might say, well, I don't really understand Bitcoin, but I understand why people are buying it because it's a store of value. It's not a fiat currency. So why don't I buy some more gold? Because at least I do understand that. And it's puzzling to me why gold hasn't done better than it has. Um, but obviously the miners are well-placed. And you know, I, I, if we do get more inflation, then I think people will turn to will turn to precious metals, and so the miners will be in good shape. But I'm not a real, uh, you know, the, the the guy that I look to um, for the comments on gold is Fred Hickey, the high tech newsletter, because he is, I think, he's a brilliant analyst, and he spends much less time these days talking about the tech sector and much more time talking about gold. And he's very good at spotting the, the, you know, the smaller gold companies, which he thinks are going to be targets. So I would, I would listen to him rather than listen to me. I, that's, where I, that's where I go for my gold okay. advice. Where do you go for your view on interest rates, the gilt market? Um, because I know here in the U.S., uh, Paul says he's not even thinking or thinking of thinking of raising rates, but you know what? Uh, he may not have, but when you look at what rates have done over the past, uh, uh, say six months, eight months, you know, we were down to uh, 0.50 and rates have tripled. And it looks like they could make a, a the 10 year note could make a run for new highs and yields. Uh, what's happening there with interest rates in the UK? Well, I think we just follow you. Um, I thought we followed you. <laughs> the, I was taught early on. I'd watch uh, the FTSE uh, as kind of being leadership, but uh, you know, those are the old days. But uh, you think that um, that the UK now uh, follows rates? Uh, say, for example, what do you pay get for ten ten year paper in the UK right now? Well, it, you know, we've got the most. I mean, the thing I think that's most extraordinary is um, 
how low the the difference is between the the ten year and the thirty year, and even oh, the spread. Yeah, the spread. And the I was talking to a very famous um, property investor who is you said where do I go for this? Um, oh my, yeah. <laughs> is your real estate very, market very, is on fire too, right? Well, he, I mean, he's been very very smart on bonds and he um i go to him and i go to russell napier whom you may have heard of financial historian who's written um, a couple of books and i interviewed russell for real vision um a few months ago and that, oh. that interview is now up on youtube and russell's okay. i mean he's one of these guys that you don't want to listen to what he says and do it today because you right. know he's one of these like brilliant people that are too he sees far ahead things of the market. Before the, yeah, he sees things before the market uh, recognizes it, and yeah, yeah. So you um, could be early with his his stuff, but it ends up manifesting. Is that what yeah. you're saying? That's so, right. Like so you know, I kind of I I, I spend t- time listening to what he says and trying to figure out you know how many years too early he is. He laughs himself about, yeah. <laughs> but you know, some of these great thinkers are just, you know, they're brilliant that way, but they're not, you know, they, they won't make you money in your trades. You need to think about, you know, when do you deploy it? And he's got some very radical views about what's going to happen. And he, he's, you know, he's of a view. A crash in real estate? Well, he's not predicting any crashes, but he, he thinks that eventually the government's going to control the allocation of capital. And he looks back to the period post the Second World War. And I think, you know, in many ways, this period today, if you're trying to find a parallel, looking for the parallel in the last 40 years, when we've had interest rates go from 15% to zero, is the wrong time to look. And what you've got to do is you've got to look back at that period in the late 40s and and through the 50s, because that's a much better parallel. And in the late 1940s, the French government had a bureau which allocated capital. And there were, I mean, you you think that's mad, but in that interview, he talks about how the US controlled the allocation of capital and the US had a similar strategy. And, you know, I think that's the, I think that's, the the thing that we need to worry about. If we get inflation taking control, governments can't put interest rates up. What else are they going to do? And I think that, you know, he thinks that what they're going to do is they're going to control where the capital is allocated. And if that happens, that's a complete disaster for all of us. Or uh, what, people in the markets, it'll shut down the markets? But won't shut them down, but it will make them, you know, very non-functional, uh, dysfunctional. Yeah, dysfunctional and very. You'll be at the whim of governments. So whether you can, you know, raise capital to grow your business will be down to whether the government says you're allowed to raise equity. I mean, it'll be yeah. fine for you know those companies which are have got strong cash flows and don't need any external capital. But, yeah. um, but for know, the capital formation and new companies and uh, innovation and everything, it's going to be a roadblock. Well, it'd be horrible. Yeah. I mean, it would yeah. just, be a, it'd just be a disaster. So we've got to hold. I, ho- I hope you're right. And he's a decade early. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm, sure he's, I'm sure he's years <laughs> early. But, yeah. um, you know, I think we've got to think about that in the back of our minds. That Maybe that's if, part of the Great Reset. You know, uh, do you do you hear people talking about this, Stephen? Then we have to wrap it up, and I want to make sure that people know where to find you. Uh, what's your concept of the Great Reset? Do you hear that bandied about in the UK? Yes, but th- different people have different views on how it happens. Yeah. Okay. And is it a currency reset? The well, way I mean. People, we, we just don't know, do we? Um, yeah. We know that we're in a very unusual time and we know that to get out of this will require some change and we just don't know how. Right. Okay. 
So uh, I'm going to show your uh, website, okay, and the book that Stephen wrote, and look at all the great endorsements that Stephen has. And you could get Stephen's book on Amazon, right? And yeah, there it is. in fact, the, the book just came out on Audible. So if you like listening to books rather than reading them, you can get that now. And my website's behindthebalancesheet.com, and you can find me on Twitter, at Steve Clapham. And since I last spoke to you, Dale, I've set up a YouTube channel. It's a YouTube okay. channel behind the balance sheet. And we've been growing. I mean, I've been posting a new video every single week and it's been okay. growing really nicely. So I'm really pleased about that. So check out, it's all free, obviously. And, um... Okay. Well, uh, I just want to say, I appreciate you coming in. Thank you for your time today, Stephen. And, uh, uh, you know, it's always interesting getting views from outside the U.S. And um, my goodness, you're a renaissance man. So you are not only interviewed, but you conduct interviews for Real Vision. So yeah, well, I, I, they, they, like, they like my interview and they said, you know, would you like to have a go yourself? I said, sure. Okay. <laughs> You're stupid enough to let me behind the camera, so to speak. And, and it's been good. It's been great fun. I've been really... I've been really enjoying it. And Dale, it is fun. it's so kind of you to have me on. Thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah. it. Who better to ask the questions than who has been answering the questions? That's the way I look at it. That's the way I've always seen it. So uh, thank you very much, Stephen, for being with us. And I'll be uh, talking to you down the line. We'll set something up to for you to come back. I really right? look forward to that. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All right. That's a wrap, everyone. And uh, we hope that uh, you enjoyed the interview. Everyone have a good week and you could join the team in 13 minutes to um, get the morning edge from Blake and look at his bias chart and the whole team is there contributing. So see you guys tomorrow for Turnaround Tuesday. Don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Adios.